This is a message to the slaves. Slave juice is of course available at this time. This is a great time to get yourself plastered with alcohol, a very important part of the government mind control scheme, which makes sure that people are under total mind control most of the time. Now you can get slave juice all around this area. Uh, many bars and pubs now open till later, making sure you can have even more slave juice until you black out and you don't know what's going on. Now, welcome here to Liverpool Street, and uh, this is an astonishing piece of magic. This is genius. Ladies and gentlemen, there are literally thousands of offices around here, and the overwhelming majority of the people don't actually do anything in them. They literally don't do anything. In this area, you'll be hard pushed to find anybody who actually produces anything, right? Especially the ones with the suits and ties, right? Seriously, you find me someone that actually does anything proper. Do you do anything around here, madam? Do you mind asking? People get really upset because if it's stuck, you know, I mean, it's all right. There's nothing to be embarrassed about. In fact, it's very clever. If you can get paid hundreds of thousands of pounds for doing nothing, then I say to you, my hat's on, hat, you know, hat's off to you. Like this chap here, for example, with a suit and tie. What do you actually do all day, sir? Do you mind my asking? What do you actually do all day doing a quick survey? What do you actually do? I'm not answering. You mind my, no, I don't mind you not answering, but your not answering it is kind of says it all, doesn't it? Why wouldn't you tell me? Obviously, because you don't actually do anything. It's hard. Is that, does anybody here actually do anything all day? What do you do actually all day, sir? Nothing. <laughs> you look very, very well dressed for someone who does nothing. Look. It's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. So we are we here in the heart of the city, a magical place where they have buildings in different phallic shapes. And I don't know, it's brilliant. Thousands of buildings, I mean, you know, what do they do here? What are you doing in those buildings up there? What do they actually do? What are they producing? What are they creating? What's going on? Anybody? Does anybody know? Man with the bike, surely, look. Do you actually do anything during the day? What do you actually do all day here? Play. Play. There you go, there's another one, you see? Well, at least he's playing, I suppose. Money. What's that? Money. They're making money. How do they do it? Does anybody know how they make the money? So, how do they make the money? You wouldn't know. You don't work around here. All right. So, I've asked the bloke. Right? Who's on, you've gone to school? Have you been to school? You work in a school. Oh my God! You're involved in that whole scam thing that they call education. <laughs> what do you actually do in the school? You're running away, going into McDonald's. Someone who works in a school and goes into McDonald's. You ain't going anywhere near my children. <laughs> As he puts his finger up. I'm just kidding, it's okay. What's that? Effing what? Was it bad? Okay, let's go, let's go here. We now have a, a heckle. It's good, it's getting people in. I'm delighted, by the way. If you feel that was wrong and I shouldn't have done that to him, it's not his fault. You're right. No. Tell me why. It was out of order, why? Because you accused him of something with your children. Oh, I see. Apparently, it was something wrong because I accused him as if I said he was a paedophile or something. Is that what you're saying? He may have thought, but am I responsible for your your beliefs and your ideas? I don't know what he thought. I did not say that. I just said I didn't want him anywhere near my children because what kind of education can someone who goes into McDonald's and sticks a finger up at a bloke and swears at them, what kind of education are they offering our children? I don't know. Anyway, so uh, here we are. We're trying to find someone that actually produces something. Sir, you're well dressed there. You've got a nice thing. What do you actually produce on a daily basis, if anything? Yeah, come on, you're well dressed. Are you a bit stuck? Yeah. Yeah, it's alright. Don't worry, don't worry. You're in very good company. It's very, very hard to find any. What about this chap here? What do you produce on a daily basis, sir? Children. Children. He produces ch on a daily basis. What, have you got like a hundred wives? <laughs> but I like him near my children. No. Not someone who produces children. Yes. I, nothing. I don't do anything. Do I, am I obliged to tell you how I make money? Anybody who knows, obviously, listen, if I knew how to make money, yeah, if I knew how to make money, no, no, what's that, say again, say again? Oh, I see, if I don't earn my money, you will pay taxes working, and I don't, oh, I see, my goodness, we are getting some accusations. It's not really working, is it? It's not really working, we've got another commentator here, a, obviously an art critic, par excellence, he says it's not working, I would say it's working perfectly well, because whatever way it works is fine. It's lovely to meet you all, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, some of the people here are plants, some of them are not. 
You have to work it out. So this guy, for all you know, could be a plant. We could have met before. He's going to obviously say definitely not, isn't he? Obviously, all the plants are trained not to... Like, for example, this chap here. You know me, don't you? I do. You do? I, do. I trained you to say no, you don't. <laughs> Didn't you listen? <laughs> Goodness sake. Anyway, so, uh, yes, back to you. So you, you pay your taxes, do you? Why do you do that? Because you're a scaffolder. Now, ladies and gentlemen, he pays his taxes because he's a scaffolder. That's not really the level of answer I was looking for. Because you work hard for your money, you have to pay tax and be people like me, suited and booted. Police, police, NHS. Police, NHS. Oh, is that really? Is that where your taxes go, do they? Is that where they go? It goes everywhere else. It certainly does. Do you think it goes to people like me? Yeah. Do you think it goes to people like me? Tell me yeah. What do you do? What? Now, they keep asking me, ladies and gentlemen, what do I do? And I've told you, I don't do anything. I don't do anything. But neither does anybody else. And nobody here has yet told me what they produce on a daily basis. Sir, you've got a jacket on. You've probably been working here today, pretending that you're civilised by wearing a suit and jacket like me, when in reality, you're just as clueless as I am. What do you produce on a daily basis? What's that? Come over and I'll tell you. Okay, go on then. I'm just a cog in a wheel. I'm just a cog in a wheel. <laughs> I like it. Okay, fair enough. Uh, but what do you actually, what part of the cog are you? In which part of the wheel do you work? I'm in the, in the technology. You're in the technology. So you produce what? Well, I produce, I maintain systems. You maintain systems for who? Well, for everyone. For banks? For banks, for cash. Points. Right, so you're working in that whole industry that doesn't do anything, so, right? Well, so he's producing system. What's that? Well, if I stop doing what I'm doing, yeah. then you're going to hit the cash point and you're going to be fine. Oh, really? Oh, that's interesting. He says if he stops being working in technology, creating systems for banks, we're going to go to the cash point and there'll be no fake money there. <laughs> Really? Wow, you, you certainly really take your job seriously. You really believe that, don't you? You actually believe that? Amazing. I, I just love the, you know, the possibilities of what the human mind can believe from, from a bloke working in technology thinking that somehow he's making the world go round to, you know, someone thinking that they're running the country, like David Cameron. Now that takes, if he actually believes he's running the country, that takes a certain type of very strange mind. A bit like that chap who's run away now. So, um, anyway, where were we? That's right. So, welcome to Liverpool Street. And uh, we're looking for somebody who actually produces anything. Does anybody here actually, or do you, as I suspected, nobody here actually does anything all day but gets paid hundreds of thousands. Now, I must tell you, if you're smart enough to work out, like I do, how to basically do nothing and get paid loads, then you go, you've got to give it to them, haven't you? I mean, nobody here is yet told me what they actually produce. Madden, what do you produce on a daily basis? Money. Okay, well, let's look at that. that he, she produces money on a daily basis, right? Now, hold on a second. What is money? What is money? Wait, we'll go to jobs in a minute. What is money? What is money? It enables people to live. Have it enables people to live. No, but what actually is it? You're only repeating half of the thing. Sorry, I beg your pardon. Enable people to live and? And have families. And have families to eat. You, if we didn't have money, if my, let's say they got rid of money, do you think we'd just stop doing that? We'd just all die? No. Or do you think we'd try to find a way to live together? Society would break down. Society would break down, really? Do you know what would happen? Do you actually know? How do you know that? Where did you get those ideas from? Because if you're watching TV, <laughs> reading the newspapers, watching the films in the cinema. Are you here to heckle people? Yes, yes. I'm, I'm here to do what you're here to do, which is to heckle. No, I'm just kidding. Thank you for joining it. No, it's absolutely fine. So she produces money. I would suggest, and I don't mean this personally, so we're on this mess together. I don't do anything either. I would suggest she actually produces nothing at all, because money is just a fiction. It's an idea in somebody's head. And you've all fallen for it. Basically, it's called slave tokens. It was created many, many years ago as a way of controlling the people instead of having them actually chained, you know, physically chained, like walking along with chains, they said, I'll tell you what, we'll take the chains off, then you can basically, what you do is you're completely free and we'll give you tokens if you come back and do things. Next day, they're all up at six o'clock in the morning, they don't even need the chains anymore, it's cheaper. They're coming, they're working, they're slaving away. And she says, lovely lady, nothing personal, says that what she does all day is makes money, which is basically making nothing. It's a fiction. It's just a fiction, guys. It's not actually real, sir. Did you know that? You were unaware of that concept. I can't say I'm surprised, to be honest. Not everybody knows. <laughs> it's a bit of a shock 
when you realise that you come to work every day, no wonder she's run away. She's probably just trying to get a train, I'd like to think. Yeah, it's horrible. And imagine when you're working in a bank and you start to realize, hold on a minute, I don't actually do anything all day. <laughs> I suppose you feel even better about your ridiculous salary. <laughs> As you give six pounds to, per hour to the people who work around you and you're happy to go into, into Tesco where they're working like slaves, six pounds fifty an hour standing up or they're pretending to be nice to you. You don't mind that, do you? Because you're making money. Is anybody here actually producing anything on a daily basis? Come on, somebody's got to. About a chat with a tie, unlikely but possible, you never know. Are you producing anything on a daily basis? And if so, what is it? Nothing. Right, are you producing anything on a daily basis? And if so, what is it? Nothing. I'll take that as a no. Highly unlikely, of course. This chap here, I don't know. It's the trainers and the suit. What's going on with the trainers and the suit? Where are you at with that? Relaxed and formal. Relaxed and formal all at once. Better chances with the women. If you like relaxed, if you like formal, he does both. So we're trying to find someone. We're still looking here in the city of London, the city of dreams, the city of illusion. It's a whole big wonderful illusion as they have these big phallic singles, symbols of nothingness over there. Look at that beautiful structure over there, pointing its self into the sky like a phallus, sir. It's called the Kazi. What's that? It's called the Kazi. Like it's called the Kazi. Is it? What, why? Oh, thanks for that. God. Funny people around here. Uh, what about this chap here? He looks ever so officious. So, can I ask you, sir, what do you actually produce on a daily basis, sir? Can I ask you, uh, doing a bit of a television show, what do you produce on a daily basis? Not very much. Not very much. <laughs> well, you're in good company around here, because I've not yet found anybody that produces anything. Do you produce anything on a daily basis? You lend me that and I'll answer you. Yes, with pleasure. I'll hold it. I just don't want you to run away. I don't trust people in the city. They'll probably, probably run away with it. No, if, if you're yeah. man enough to give it to me, I'll yeah, go on, be delighted go on. to speak with yeah. you. Okay. Yeah, yeah, go. Because it's great. No, no, hold, hold the thing and speak right, right close okay. into it. Do I need to press it? Yeah, you okay. keep it pressed in. I, I must uh, say, it's great fun to see you again because last year, when I took my grandchildren to Butlins at Claxton, you were then appearing at Butlins and you're just as good today <laughs> as you were last year. So it's an absolute delight to see you. Um, well, thank you. But don't take the piss out of people too much, okay? okay. I think right. there's a limit to that. All right. Uh, but you're very entertaining. Uh, I don't take you seriously, but I don't decry your okay. efforts for that. Okay. So all the best to you and have a thank nice you. weekend. <laughs> Thank you. What a great debut on the megaphone. You need to be a little bit closer next time and slightly more projection in your voice. But it was a very nice thing he said. Thank God I haven't got an ego because if I did, it would just start to get a little bit bigger. Anyway, so, um, so, so what do you actually do for a living? Do you actually produce anything? I'll take that as a no. My God, there's nobody here that seems to be... Anybody, hands up, anybody here actually produce anything to, to, get, to get hold of the pieces of fake paper and fake digits? Yes? No, he's not. Oh, no, he's not. Very good. <laughs> what do you produce? You probably actually do, don't you? Go on, what do you do? I'm a shoe repair. He's a shoe repair. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies, this is a real actual person. Look, a shoe repair. He actually produces something. God, you're a bit weird, aren't you? Why'd you do that? Why don't you just do nothing like this lot? Do you know what I mean? You get paid a lot more. <laughs> well, I wouldn't... Do you ever put a pin in the really obnoxious ones? Do you know what I mean? It's worth it, isn't it? Stick a pin in... Oh, I am sorry. Like me, very good, very good, yes. And like you as well, probably. <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. It's all right. No, it's nobody's fault. If you're feeling angry now, now what, what I want you to do, very important now, then what you need to be looking at, ladies and gentlemen, is yourself. Always spend some of your energy, some of your focus within. I want you to just notice what you're feeling right now. I want you to become the witness of your own experience as we create a sat sat. Uh, chill out, mate. Chill out, mate. <laughs> come here. Come here. Come here. Just come here. Come on, that's assault. That's assault. Right, it's assault. It's assault. It's why, why did you do that? Why did you do that? Why did you do that? Come on, yeah, come, come. We'll talk about it. We'll talk about it. I promise you. I know. I'll talk. I'll talk about it. No, no, come, come, come and talk about it. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Come, come outside. Come with us. Come with us. Come with us. Let's talk. Let's talk. Let's talk. Let's talk. Let's talk. That's what this fucking country is. Let's talk. Shut your faces. What the fuck? Wait, 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 calm down. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Come outside. Come, come outside. We'll talk about it in public. Come outside. Come. Come. No, no, because in here, it's a station, and I I'm not allowed to do this in a station. Come. 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 Don't be, don't be brave. Be brave. Be brave. I must say, it was a... Uh, 
quite a welcome shower, to be honest, in this very hot weather. <laughs> uh, one, one side, so, uh, where was I? Yes. Well, I was just, uh, just saying how important it is to become aware of what's going on inside. So right now, I'm just going to share with you, now I'm feeling a little bit jittery. Of someone put some water over me, but it's all right. It's okay. It's just water, thank God. And it uh, could have been a lot worse. Could have been a lot worse. But it's all right. It's just water. And I, at the end of the day, he did something. He did something that can trigger our feelings in me. But you see, what we need to do is just to be aware of what's going on inside. So what we need to do is I just want you to be, just take about 15 seconds just to be aware of what's going on inside you, what you're feeling and what you're thinking right now, just to become aware of it and become the witness of your experience. So uh, what I want to do is to unpack what just happened there. What was going on there? I want to talk psychologically, spiritually, what was happening there with that guy? Come on, somebody. Somebody. Yes, go on. Um, I think he got very def offensive because he didn't know, he's never been told these things before and it hit home. Right. So basically what you think might have happened is something that I said, he's never really told, been told these things before and something that I said made him feel triggered off a feeling of discomfort with him because the truth can be painful. And you know, I think that I can certainly, uh, I can certainly uh, identify with that. Truth can be very painful, it can be uncomfortable, and so it's something that he said. And that he, I mean, he claims it was because I was making fun of people and, um, you know, it's, it's an interesting point, you know, I think that to make, I think that to make fun of people, in other words, to, to get, to create entertainment at the expense of somebody else is something that I wouldn't like to do. But to create entertainment that makes, that can trigger discomfort in someone else, that I am absolutely, this is what I all, what it's all about. If you, if the entertainment that you are watching is not actually bringing out anything in you, but you're just passively sitting there like a robot watching their crap programming. They are literally programming you. They are literally programming you. Watching EastEnders, all that stuff, the news, this is all a type of programming, unless you are getting involved in it. So it's fine. If you feel angry right now, it's fine if you feel frightened, if you feel happy. In fact, you don't even feel happy because you are the space in which happiness arises or anger arises. So, guy puts water on my head. At first, I get reactive. I run after him. And then I just observe that it's okay. It's all right. You know? And, you know, God bless him. Yeah? God bless him. I pray for him. You know, and for myself that, that we both keep on learning that, you know, nobody's responsible for my feelings except for me. That's it. Anybody here saw the water thing happen? David, what would you say? Um, I Come on. <laughs> Very as loud as you can. Right. I'd, I'd really say that I think he was responding out of uh, reactiveness to you. I think uh, he couldn't quite deal with uh, perhaps what you were saying or the very fact that you were there mouthing off. I think that's, that's basically it. I think people just don't want to be talked to. Um, I think they're tired of being talked to, actually. I, I don't either. That's my feeling. <laughs> Okay, so tired of being talked to. Anybody here? Are you tired of being talked to, sir? Are you tired of being talked to? I'll take that as a yes. What's that? I bet you ain't short of a few, Bob. You bet I ain't short of a few, Bob. <laughs> what makes you think that? 
Do you like it? I think you're a rich boy's kid. I'm a rich boy's kid. <laughs> is that bad? It is to me, yeah. It is to you. It depends how you what rich. How rich? How rich is rich? Can you tell me? Huh? You, you accuse me of being the son of rich people. How rich is rich? Where where, where does it start? What what kind of money? What? Where's your school? Where's your born? Uh, where was I born? Uh, in London. Where? Where, in, in our home. I was born at home. My mother had me at home. School. Which school did I go to? School. So I, I really don't like to talk about school. It's yeah. a terrible, terrible experience. You went to a fucking bus one, didn't you? What's that? You went to a... Where's your school, mate? I went to a school. That was the problem. I'm trying to get over it. Unfortunately, many of the people here... Look, I bet this chap went to school. Now look at him. Did you go to school, sir? Yes, you see what I mean? Gone. Absolutely gone. The creativity has been bushed out of him as he comes to work every day doing nothing and getting paid lots for it. What was that? You have had everything. You, you, you. I've had everything. I'm making up. I'm coming up, but I'm going down. You never done it. I've never done it. What have I never done? Where you going to school? Where's your school? Where do I go to school? You're really into this whole school thing, right? School. I, I try not to speak about my school. I don't. I'm embarrassed that I went to school. By the way, if you know anybody, by the way, please don't tell anyone that I went to school. I'm really embarrassed. I'm really ashamed. That I was so stupid. Obviously, when I was young, I didn't realise they were brainwashing me. But then I got older. I think, my God, how could my parents do that to you? By the way, if your parents sent you to school, maybe it's time to look them in the eye and ask them why they did it. They'll probably, if they tell you the truth, only did it because they wanted someone to babysit you so that they could get on with whatever they wanted to do, basically. Which is why we're all in such a mess. And that's why I don't want to talk about what school I went to. I actually went to a secret school for uh, training megaphonists. It was a specialist school for training megaphonists. What? Megaphonists. Haven't you heard of megaphonists? People who use megaphones. Megaphonists. No? I believe in the Bible. You believe in the Bible. Okay, that's... Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show. Today we're doing some... Um, oh, sorry, big pun. Hello. We're doing some free association here with this chap here. I'm pretending that I am a psych Freudian psychotherapist, and he's pretending that he's my client, okay? So now he said, I believe in the Bible, okay? Tell me more about that. I was brought up in a fucking Catholic... You were brought up in an effing Catholic... What? Catholic... What? Convent. You were brought up in a convent. You lucky man. I've always wanted to be brought up in a convent. Must be much... Must be a lot of fun being... Do they bring up boys in a convent? What's that? Best thing ever happened. Best thing that ever happened to you. <laughs> okay. Anyway, thanks very much for being part of it. I wish you a wonderful weekend. Thanks for being part of it. So, uh, any more questions? Do you have any questions about anything, sir? No, I'm saying, do you have any questions about anything? That's the point, right now. I've only just turned up. You've only just turned up? Right, you don't know what my point is. No, no, I've, I've, all I've seen you is patronising that chap. All I've seen me is patronising that chap. Right, okay. That's fair enough. That's your interpretation. I'm sorry if I patronised you. I wasn't. I was just kind of playing with you. You all right with that? Thank you. Anyway, if you want to get offended on behalf of other people or yourself, please feel free to do so. It's your choice to be as easily offended as you like. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, if you do have any questions, please do ask. If you don't have any questions, you really need to start thinking of some. Seriously, not having any questions is like almost not like not like not being alive. Do you have any questions? Uh, who is God? Who is God? That's a fantastic question. Hold on, you're, but you're not. No time. He hasn't even got five seconds to hang about for the answer. You don't really want. Okay, so hold on a second. Hold on a second. I don't think you need. You want to actually know who God is, do you? No, I just want to piss you off. You just want to piss me off. Right. Okay. Fair enough. Off you go. You've, you've not been very good at it. You have to try a little bit harder than that. Maybe throw some water over me. That'll piss me off for about 30 seconds. Okay. <laughs> uh, but you know what I mean? Just saying, who is God? Who is God? A good question. Just before we finish, anybody here, please? Uh, chap asked. I've actually been quite interested. Who is God? He's in the sky. No he, one knows. No one knows he's in the sky. Yeah. All right. Fair enough. Yeah. I like the paradox in that. No one knows he's in the sky. Who is God? No? What about you, sir? Can you tell us? Sorry, just while you're rolling up, who is God? Do you mind? He's the Almighty that created everything. He's all the Almighty that created everything. Oh, thank you very much. Okay, man on bicycle, who is God? What? 
God doesn't exist. Okay, lovely. Can you tell me now, if you don't think God exists, you obviously must have some kind of idea about the God that doesn't exist, right? Otherwise, if I was to ask you, who is Shalabuba, you'd say, oh, I don't know, I don't know what you mean. So you've obviously got an idea of what this God is that doesn't exist. Tell me about this God that doesn't exist. You can't. Well, then why are you saying it doesn't exist? I mean, if you don't know what you're talking about, then why say that something you don't know what you're talking about doesn't exist? Isn't God that which is mysterious? In which case, obviously, you don't understand it. And you never will completely, probably, otherwise it will be you. <laughs> which is a bit worrying, to be honest, looking at you. I'm not saying you don't look like a reasonable guy, but the thought that you are kind of the ultimate in the divine manifestation worries me somewhat. I don't know why. It's some sense I have. But you're... You are still just a part of God as much as, even as much as this man here. Do you know? I think so. Who is God? He's all around me. He's behind you and in front of you. Who is God? Say again. God is who you want him to be, or her, or it. And who do you want God to be, madam? Who do you want God to be? Father of Jesus. Father of Jesus. Not Jesus. The Father of. Man made doesn't exist. Man made doesn't exist, says man, but he has had quite a lot to drink. So I'm not sure we can trust that one. Who is God, David? In the brain, I think. God is in the brain. In the brain. Can you find it? Have you dissect it? Oh, there it is. Look, there. Who is God? You don't know? You haven't met him? Would you like to? Not really? Well, fair enough. Well, you ain't going to be meeting him then sometime soon, because I'll tell you something, that the God of my understanding would never meet with you unless you wanted to, because that's just the type of non-bloke he is. So that's fine, don't worry, you won't meet God. If you don't want to, you won't. What about, uh, you must have a scary idea of God, right? You think God's like scary and horrible and punish you and things for not being perfect? No. No? Do you think God would like just love you just because you are who you are? What's that? No? You don't think God would be able to love you just because you are who you are? I think so. I mean, surely if God can do something, he's got to be able to even love these two blokes here. Do you know what I mean? Because they are quite lovable-looking rogues, aren't they? Dressed in their suits and ties. And who is God? Man with the rap. Who is God? You don't know? You want to get on with the McDonald's, right? Is it McDonald's? You actually went in? You went in there? You trust them? You trust them with your life? Why don't you go and fucking get one, mate? Why don't I go and get one? Um, there are about 73 reasons why I wouldn't get one of those, and that's the number of ingredients. No, actually, probably about 62 of them. <laughs> 62 of the ingredients out of the 73 ingredients that went in there to make you think that that tastes good. <laughs> If you want to speak to me, you have to be part of the film. Do you want to be part of the film? Would you like to be part of the film? Would you like to be part of the film? You, you, because you, you are being filmed now. I'm just telling you. I think you better get back up. Alpha. Do you want to describe me to them? Say I've got a, like a. What do you think of the suit? Do you like it? Do you like the suit? Come on, be nice. I like your. Oh, very sensitive. Don't, don't, don't worry about it. It's alright. Just take it easy. Hold on a second, we've got another interesting typical situation here where this young man who works for Network Rail, who works for Network Rail, has told me you're not allowed to do this. And um, he's now radioing in for backup. Help, backup, backup. Bloke doing something outside of normal frame of reference. Quick. It doesn't, where does it say this in the 5,000 pages that you had to read before your job about all the health and safety, like they give a crap about your health and safety when they allow a big McDonald's in here as you walk along? They don't care about your health and bloody safety, not at all. Anyway, here we go. He's, out, he's calling back up. I think we should get the armed police in, to be honest. Don't just get me this, you know, the PCSOs. I don't want no PCSOs. I want the proper hardcore armed police. Call the armed police. Hello, is that the police? Is it an emergency? Yes. What exactly is the problem? Oh, there's a bloke not doing what a bloke from Network Rail told him to do. Oh, oh, oh come along. We can't allow that now, because you know what that would lead to. If he doesn't do what that, eventually the whole population will realise that all the rules are basically a load of nonsense and they're only applying 
applied to the poor and not the rich. <laughs> we don't want to allow that. It's a slippery slope. The slaves might get, you know, they might get a whiff of it. Uh, can we get an ETA for the next level of security to deal with this terrible issue of freedom of speech? Uh, ten minutes. Ten minutes? No, that's not good enough. Ten minutes? I mean, you can't allow someone just to d d disobey someone from Network Rail who works for a private corporation that for some reason runs the station that's meant to be part of the service for us that we pay 150 quid to get a train ticket from here to there so some guy who runs a hedge fund, uh, who's a hedge fund manager, can have another holiday home <laughs> in uh, God knows where. Talking of holiday homes, by the way, while we do wait for the police, do you know, think about this, if your parents wouldn't have had you, yeah, they could probably afford a holiday home in France. Now probably think about that on a regular basis and think, holiday home, you. Holiday home, you. Can you imagine why they're so uptight, do you know what I mean? How many regrets? Look, he's reading the Evening Standard and not even embarrassed. You're not even embarrassed? About what? About the fact that you're reading propaganda. You I couldn't know? give a shit. You couldn't give a shit? I couldn't give a shit. Where'd you get that idea from? Oh, I read it in the Evening Standard. Don't worry about propaganda, headline in Standard. Oh, alright then. I'll read the Standard. Oh, why should I worry about that? I don't care. Yeah, I'll read it. It's free. It's fine. So it's going to scare the living daylights out of you. I don't care. It's fine. At least, I'm, at least I'll be feeling something. I don't want to be just bored. I don't want to be left with my own thoughts. And God's sake, you don't want to be left with your own thoughts on the train, ladies and gentlemen, get yourself an evening standard, okay, it'll put the fear of death into you to keep you under control, but it's better than having to actually be just present with your own thoughts, my goodness, no wonder you're feeling so dull, the dullness of those thoughts, no wonder, anyway, uh, we've got about five minutes till the police come, oh they're coming, oh good, oh taking notes, get your notebook out for this rather important crime, Ladies and gentlemen, they're calling, more back up. they're calling more back up. Yes, the more the better. The more, get them armed. Get the armed lot. I think you should get the armed police. This is a serious crime now. Come on, come on, guys. We can't have people just talking sense in train stations. Sense. 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 <laughs> Sorry, that was a good heckle. Sorry, I beg your pardon. We can't have people talking nonsense in train stations. Is that better? A little bit more accurate. Yes.